Well, in the lab today at Diverse Dimensions, and I wanted to get a jump on a little bit today, a lot of things to measure today here in the lab. Um, but I had a couple of these bumper beams dropped off yesterday, and I wanted to get them prepped for today. But there's something inside of PolyWorks that I wanted to show you guys on how you can grab measured feature data, whether it be slots or holes uh, or points, and how you can use them or transfer them into a reference point or uh, convert them into a reference point so that when you capture them, they can be used in an alignment uh, that's used as a reference point alignment. So I wanted to show you that here because it's pretty unique what, um, what kind of a datum scheme that this, uh, that this part has. So you'll see here inside of this, uh, this PDF how this bumper beam looks. This view right here in the upper side of this drawing is from the front side of this bumper beam. And then down here, it's from the back side. But notice this, my A datums, I've got three A targets, A1 and A2 and A3. And those targets are all on this side. Okay, so they're up in this area here and here and here. And that's pretty easy to pick in the reference points, just to pick points that you can anchor to the surface and use for a reference point alignment. But notice this. Up in this view, I've got a B datum here, and I've got a C datum that's right next to it here. So it's a hole and slot, pretty common, uh, common features for using in, a, in an alignment like this. So in the gauge, what these guys will have is um, maybe some pads or some rests that this, um, that this part will lay on, but then two pins that will go into the B and C datum. Well, I want to mimic that in my reference point alignment here inside of PolyWorks. So, I'll show you this. I'll go into PolyWorks here. Notice this. I've got my three A datums picked already. They've already been put onto that surface in the, in the position that the drawing wants them. But then on this side, let me flip it around a little bit. I'll hide my reference targets a second. And then I'm going to show you my B and C holes. So, both of those features right there are what I'm going to use for this reference point alignment. Well, I don't have those down here, but there's a method to grab those features and pull them down into the reference targets. The way I'm going to do that is I will highlight both of these datums, and then I'm just going to come up to the measure pull down menu, and then go to reference targets. Okay, now this is the same spot where I went earlier and I would pick on reference targets that were the A datum, so I could just anchor those to the surface. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create feature points. When I click on that, okay, it defaults to a name that I've got up here. I'm just going to change that a second. I'm going to say datum target B is going to be my first one. So I'm going to show you that here in a second, how that gets named. And then instead of the method of creation, which is anchor, I'm going to down arrow here and pick up from objects. Okay, and then notice I'll go back to my tree view. Those two objects are highlighted here in my model tree. So back to dialog zone. And I'm going to select all X, Y, and Z just for right now because I want to show you how to change those as well. So then I will hit create. And notice what happens. If I hit create, I get a couple extra targets here that are populated based on the center of the hole and the slot. And I don't like this name, datum target B2 over here. That's actually my C. So I'll show you this. I'll close out of this and look at this. It populates my reference targets column here with a couple of extra targets. Well, here's B. I'm going to right click on him and go to properties. And notice this, my alignment directions still are the X and the Y and the Z. Well, if I zoom in on my B, that direction of, uh, of constraint that I want to use in here is the up down, which is the Z, and the cross car, which is Y. But my fore aft is always held by the datums on the other side. So I'll deselect my X and then I'll apply it. Now, if I go, I can either go next or close. Um, and then go back to that tree view. If I go next, notice this. It goes to the next. It goes to the next feature in line here. So I'll go back to dialog zone. 
And instead of that being the datum target B, I want to call that the datum target C. So I change his name. And I'll zoom over here a second just to show you that. And since he has a slot, what I want to do is I just want to control the up, down, or the Z component in here. So I'm going to get rid of the X and the Y, and then I'm going to apply that. Now, my, my datum C slot, notice this, it is only going to be used in the Z component. So I'll close on on that. But it's a super easy way. If you guys are doing reference point alignments or um, these, these targets, reference target alignments, super easy to go under that measure pull down menu. And if you've already created or model prepped some of these features that you use as targets, <clears throat> it's super easy to click on them and create them from objects and have them move down into the reference targets for the alignment. Mm -hmm.